Alrighty, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion, this time for February 24th, 2023. Really interesting episode we got here today. We're going to update you guys on all the latest with all the changes in the models, as well as another event that could potentially come the day after further down the line. So make sure you hit that like button down below if you haven't already, and uh, let's get into it here. Believe it or not, we actually have a severe weather event here today. It's not a very significant one, but there's, you know, severe weather exists. And uh, it's in one of the more unusual places of the United States. We have a 1 out of 5 on the severe weather scale over here in the southwestern portions of California, over near LA, Los Angeles. Uh, believe it or not, this is actually for the threat for tornadoes. Tornadoes actually do exist. And of course, that is what the satellite imagery is going to be up above us throughout the rest of the video. So uh, be really interesting to kind of see how that uh, that low pressure system is really steering in a lot of that flow, just like that. A lot of these uh, clouds and showers and storms that are just absolutely marching ashore. And uh, that's the reason why uh, when you've got storms near a low pressure system that are uh, moving quite as rapidly as they are, they can uh, potentially bring some severe weather, and that's the reason why we got that there today. So something really interesting to note with all of that. Now, just to kind of get the timings in general and stuff like that for you all here today, we're going to be uh, putting here the simulated radar loop. Uh, of course, the unfortunate thing is the time is in Eastern because that's where I live, and so can't really translate that way. Um, but if you guys just subtract three hours, then it should be good. So uh, moving on through, you can see a lot of these showers and thunderstorms that are really just surging through. Watch the constant flow as it continues to march further and further into portions of California. Expected to get a lot of severe storms there, but also notice in the Sierras, a lot of snow that's going to be forming up there. A uh, few, you know, few feet, quite a lot, actually. It's not just a few. It's, you know, good tens of feet. So uh, note there that there's going to be a lot of precipitation over the general area uh even have some meteorologists saying that a lot of hail or grapple can be possible across some areas um so whether it's snow sleet uh hail or rain uh there's expected to be a lot of precipitation over the area here in california over the next day and a half leading up into sunday as well so uh, just something a little to note, and for the people who are curious as to how much snow you guys could potentially see by the time we get to Sunday morning, I mean, look at the max down here at the bottom right-hand corner. It'll tell you how many inches there's going to be, 126 inches potentially here in the Sierras, and then you even have some others down a little bit further south. Snow actually can get all the way down into Mexico in some spots as well in the higher elevations. So don't be surprised if it's pretty chilly. Some of the rain can turn into snow, sleet, hail. Please be safe out there, all right? Traveling can be an issue with stuff like that. And then we move off to this right here. This is our severe weather outlook for Sunday. So we've been talking about this event for quite some time. As I said, I'm going to give you guys the little brief things and then the things that have changed with this model and why this event is going to be so difficult to forecast. Uh, but in this light green here, that's a general thunderstorm risk. In the dark green is a one out of five in the severe weather scale. Yellow is a two out of five and orange is a three out of five. And uh, I really do believe that they perfectly put this enhanced risk right within here. Maybe if I were to, uh, push it down a little bit further south, I would. Maybe Paducah, Texas could potentially be uh, really in that area. But regardless, this is a really good outlook here by the Storm Prediction Center, and I really do agree with what they've done with this. So if you're in those areas, especially in the yellow or in the orange, I highly recommend you watch out for you know Sunday's event. Uh, I also want to direct your guys' attention to Monday. Yes, Monday. We have the potential for severe weather over here in the portions of the Ohio River Valley over into the Appalachians. Uh, note over here, eastern Kentucky, eastern Tennessee, as well as maybe even central portions of those states as well and the surrounding areas could actually see some severe weather. I'm more or less anticipating more of a damaging wind threat. Uh, you know, hail and tornadoes seem a little bit more unlikely to me, but the damaging wind threat I do believe is going to be more of a primary a threat in your guys's area so if you're in those areas go ahead and watch out as uh you guys could potentially see some severe weather on monday all right we're gonna try and zoom through this as quickly as possible here's the 500 millibar wind shear which is the jet stream uh, this is wind shear six kilometers above ground level 
Of course, the timing is above, as you guys know, and of course, the graph is down below the legend to kind of tell you how strong the wind shear actually is. We've got our high pressure system over here in Florida creating clockwise flow, and then we have our new low pressure system off of the coast of California creating the severe weather today that's creating counterclockwise flow. And so as this continues to move through with time, our low pressure system is going to move over California, Arizona, and New Mexico, and it's going to bring a lot of very strong wind shear. Now, depending upon the shape of how this wind shear presents itself can actually determine as to what tilt it is and therefore what type of severe weather we're going to get. And so we still have a bit of a neutral to negatively tilted shortwave trough right here with our low pressure system moving on through. The way we can tell that it is a negatively tilted trough is because if you were to kind of create that little bowl and then create a line at the bottom of the bowl all the way up and just to kind of, you know, make it straight line to go up in the middle of it, uh, this is a bit more of a negatively tilted uh, trough. If you go down back in time a little bit more over here to when it's over California, you can see that it is a little bit more of a neutrally tilted. It just goes straight up. And then, of course, if the bowl was something like this, this would be a positively tilted trough. So uh, this is a negatively tilted trough moving through the area. A lot of very strong wind shear is present over this environment. So in the upper levels, we're going to have uh, a lot of wind over in this environment. Meanwhile, moisture will be able to try and seep in. Notice I say the word try, and that is exactly what we're going to talk about as to why this event is so difficult to forecast later on in the video. But according to the Euro model, more of the long range models that uh, aren't really super specific sometimes depict that there's going to be a lot of moisture to kind of seep into the area here out in front of what would be a cold front and or dry line and then right along that line there where your dew points uh, kind of go into a lower version of dew points a drier dew point uh, right along that line is where some storms can potentially try and form so uh, particularly over here near the red river area near uh, paducah texas and altus oklahoma i would watch out for the potential of some severe weather over in your general vicinity but I want to move over here to something that's really interesting here. And now we're going to take a look more at the specific models, our convective allowing models, which really love to kind of hone into specific stuff. The long range models are pretty bad at doing that. The uh, short range models that are a lot higher resolution are doing a pretty good job, or they usually do a pretty good job, uh, give or take some, you know, buffoonery that occurs on some of the models. But the NAM 3 kilometer is showing, uh, showing something that's really interesting, and I want to shout out to this professor from the University of Illinois, Jeff Frame, uh, who actually put this on Twitter. I was trying to figure out the reason why this was, and he gave a really good um, in-depth discussion as to why it was. So I'm going to try and break it down a little bit as to what he was saying earlier um, on Twitter. If you haven't already, I recommend you go follow him because he's wicked smart. I mean, he's a professor that teaches meteorology for God's sake. So, uh, this is what's going to be really interesting here leading up to Sunday and as to whether or not Sunday is going to be a significant event or it's going to be not as significant an event. And it starts with the dew points. It starts with the dew points and the temperatures and realize that what's happening right now is we've got a bit of a stationary boundary localized over here in the southeastern portions of Texas. This is what uh, I was trying to tell you guys earlier in yesterday's video, but I didn't quite know why this was. And now since uh, this has kind of uh, progressed a little bit more and we've seen a little bit more from the models, uh, there's a good reason as to why this is. And uh, we'll play this out here as to whether or not the dew points actually get into the environment. You see it stays there and then all of a sudden it rushes up towards the uh, late afternoon. And by this point, this is around noon, you can see that the dry line is trying to get up into portions of the northern Texas panhandle, but you don't really have a whole lot of moisture in front of it. So the timing of it wouldn't really work until when the moisture gets up to the area uh, sometime right about six or seven o'clock. And to be honest with you, you, that's a little bit too late for people who actually want to storm chase by then it might even be nighttime so kind of a little difficult there it does say moisture will kind of seep back in but it'll be a little bit more of an evening style of event so why is that well we're going to take a look at something called the total cloud cover and this is going to be really useful for us today uh, and maybe even tomorrow as uh, we take a look at what's currently ongoing and we're going to look at Saturday, all right? Because realistically, 
Um, it's kind of a chain of events that occur. Saturday um, gives way to Sunday, more or less, as it does with any event. And so if we look at Saturday and we notice here, there is a lot of cloud cover. Uh, all these percentages here is the total cloud cover. How much, you know, how much are you seeing cloud compared to sky? And a lot of it is 100% over here. Maybe a little bit less, but, you know, once you get into the 80% and above is really when you have uh, near total cloud cover in the sky. And... We just have a lot of it. On Saturday morning, we have a lot of cloud cover over the area. And that continues to be the case all the way up until we get into Sunday morning into which it starts to kind of give away. And because that cloud cover starts to give away, the ground starts to heat. Moisture is allowed to return into the area. And at that point, we can potentially then see some severe weather back behind it. And the thing about cloud cover is that you need the sun to heat the ground in order for you to continue to get higher and higher temperatures, right? Well, if you're outside and it's super cloudy outside, some instances could occur to where the sun will reflect off of the clouds and it will actually be warmer on the clouds. It will not actually warm the ground below you. Well, this is when stuff gets really interesting, so you guys are going to have to bear with me a little bit, all right? Right here in this model, this is your surface temperatures in Celsius. All right, so this is a different temperature. Uh, Fahrenheit is not going to be used for this because you can't have temperatures in Fahrenheit above a certain level on this website. So you got you guys are just going to have to bear with me and uh, look at it with the numbers yourself. And this is the uh, temperature at 850 millibars. So 850 right here. Okay. So top part of your screen, 850 millibars, that's one kilometer above the surface. And then this is your surface temperatures right here, all right? So let's play it out. This is Sunday. Uh, technically, this is Saturday night uh, leading into Sunday. And I want you guys to realize that all these numbers here, this is all within the scale of Celsius, all right? If you were to take a thermometer out and put it up, remember, this is the, your temperatures at, you know, in Celsius over here on the side, and we got single digit temperatures in Celsius, which is about, I should say 40 or 50 degrees in some spots over here. But then you have temperatures in the teens over here in the upper levels, which means that your upper level temperatures or really lower level temperatures above the surface is warmer than it is towards the surface, which means that the temperatures towards the surface aren't gonna be able to mix a lot of those moisture up regardless if there is moisture in central Texas or the moisture that is in the upper levels when you are supposed to have cold air sinking, that moisture is not going to be brought down to the surface at all. So therefore, you do not have any sort of moisture or any sort of higher temperatures in central Texas because the surface is a lot colder than it is in the upper levels. And because of that, you might not see a whole lot of moisture return into the areas until too late. So uh, we'll play this out through uh, we'll even go even a little bit back in time and you can see that on saturday morning this is still the case we still have uh, near 30 degree temperatures over here in central texas and yet it's still the teens over in this area you still have some very warm temperatures in the lower levels compared to the surface so this is really one of those things to where the environment is not going to be able to kind of settle out when we talk about energy in the environment the convective available potential energy we always talk about how warm air rises and cold air sinks. We typically want that before severe weather setups, but we aren't going to get any warm air to rise because the warm air is above the surface. We want the warm air to rise from the surface and up. That way we can get the moisture into the atmosphere, be able to get our thunderstorms so that it can push on through, but that's not gonna happen. What it was looking like from the long range models, it could have potentially been a significant severe weather event. And notice how I said severe weather event. I'm not gonna label it as a hail event, wind event, tornado event, a severe weather event, uh, but that isn't really the case as of right now. So let's take a look at the HRRR model and let's see what it says uh, with this morning. Now we can't go any further than um, what it's going to say for Sunday morning. It's a 48 hour uh, in advance model and uh, we got it from early this morning. And so it's only gonna tell us early Sunday morning. And uh, from what we've got here, 
Uh, this is uh, this is Friday night into Saturday morning. Note a lot of our kind of decent temperatures here in Celsius. Uh, pretty warm up there, but pretty cool in the central portions of Texas as well. As that continues to progress overnight and into Sunday morning, uh, the temperatures are pretty much, you know, cut off right here. But the big difference with this, the huge difference with this actually, is that the temperatures are a lot further north than what the NAM says. All right. The NAM had its temperatures right about here near the coastline. And so there's a little bit of a saving grace, a little bit of a saving grace with this event. Potentially, all right, we could be talking about a little bit more of a moisture return, all right? And this is going to be uh, something really interesting to watch. Uh, I was looking at with the uh, 12Z, and of course, it's not really going to do it now. Here it is. Uh, the 12Z HRRR, I want you guys to watch the southern portion of Texas here and how this moisture rushes in near Del Rio. This could be the saving grace. If we get more of that moisture return up the boundary here, we could potentially be talking about severe weather before uh, daybreak. So that could be something uh, really interesting to note. There you go. There's your return of moisture into that area. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what this moisture does, uh, but we're hoping that it doesn't really get to the uh, main area of severe weather, so that way everyone else uh, could have a nice Sunday. Uh, let's move off to um, what's going to potentially happen here uh, with the simulated radar, because this is really going to be uh, just an overgeneralization as to what exactly is going to happen and where the timings are. So Central Texas... Um, you guys are going to get severe weather, but it all starts with the northern panhandle of Texas right here. This is where the dry line is, as we mentioned, and these storms are going to sprout off the dry line and continue to extend into quite a line. You see the line moves through into Oklahoma, and this will eventually extend down further into Texas to where you can see a further elongated line uh, extend from Kansas City, Missouri down into Tulsa and then all the way down through into central Texas. Now, now realistically where the main area of severe weather is going to be is right where that enhanced risk is. Right in this area right here is where I'm expecting the worst severe weather to exist. Whether it's damaging winds, spotty hail, maybe the chance for a tornado is definitely possible within that area. Uh, you know, maybe even one or two tornadoes is definitely possible. But right within that area there of northern Texas into southwestern Oklahoma is where I would really watch out for the biggest risks of severe weather. Uh, let's move off to a brief explanation of the timings of Monday. And uh, this is when stuff gets really interesting. The low pressure system starts to transition further towards the north and east. It's now centralized over Illinois. On the northern side, we got a lot of freezing rain and snow. And then this band right here that's going to extend just like this is where the main area of severe weather is going to uh, be localized so areas over here near indiana uh, ohio as well as eastern kentucky and eastern tennessee i would not be surprised if you guys got severe weather as well even if you guys aren't even a part of that outlook that they issued for day four for monday so just something to keep in mind the general uh, area for strong damaging winds is possible don't really um i don't really see anything beyond that honestly I just think it's going to be more of a uh, a linear unidirectional mode uh, that is going to exist over the Ohio River Valley and nothing really too much else. But uh, if you guys did enjoy the video, all right, pretty in-depth, pretty long. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications. Share this with friends and family. I also said that uh, if you guys commented that you watched the video on my nice little community post yesterday that I'd feature, uh, feature you here. And you are going to be featured right now. There you go. Uh, you commented the word weather. I appreciate you. So uh, watch out for another community post today. And uh, maybe you'll be featured in tomorrow's video. So thank you guys again. Stay safe out there. And I will see you guys tomorrow.